Good evening, everybody. Uh, I welcome you to the last May session of Power BI Power Platform User Group Stuttgart. So today, another interesting session, last one in May, and you will see later on some announcements. So I see we all already get uh, people from all around the world. So I don't know, is it good morning, good afternoon, but anyhow, so I started just I just started the recording, so whoever is not feeling comfortable with it or want to see it later, all the recordings will be posted a few days after session on uh, Power Platform Germany YouTube channel, so you can find it there also. And so just before we start with today's session and with today's guests, just a few announcements for June. So June 17, Ahmed Adli, we are jumping to Power Platform and to AI Builder, a really interesting session coming up. And 24th of June, uh, Andre Lapaine also joining us. I will post uh, the name of the topic while we align it in the next few days, but we have a confirmed session So for June. So it's slowly but securely building up also for June. So if anyone have an interesting session or would like to present feel free to reach out to me or on a meetup uh, on a meetup on a for a power platform and for today again a big pleasure to welcome and to have Imke here so Imke Feldman probably you at least once uh, came across her blog whenever you were doing something around power query and today she is presenting us with uh, recursive operations in the Power Query with low code and no code. And I'm, as I said in the beginning, I'm really looking forward to it. So Imke, welcome and thank you for uh, taking time to join our user group and present here. So stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Augustine. Let me share my First, turn on my slideshow and then share my screen presentation. Yes. Great. So, hello and thanks everyone for attending. Um, to today's session is about mastering recursive functions in Power Query. And just a short introduction. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, I think Augustine uh, introduced me already. Um, I'm the blogger behind the BI accountant and some of the stuff I'm presenting today you have also find um, on my blog. Um, first slide is about just to give you an idea when to use recursion. Um, there are a couple of um, use cases um, in the real world like when you loop through paginated web pages for example if you want to sol dynamically solve parent-child-like hierarchies, like bill of materials or organizational structures, um, if you want to do something like multiple replacements, for example, or create fast performing calculations for running totals in Power Query, do typical Excel stuff, or what we want to do today, we want to do some advanced text extraction uh, topics that I'm going to present later in the demo. So um, in general, in Power Query, there are two native functions for recursion. The first is the list generate function, which we'll be using today. And the list generate function has three um, mandatory parameters and one optional parameter. And all three mandatory parameters are functions. And functions are nothing, uh, <laughs> at least not so easy uh, to um, write and um, design in Power Query. And today I'm going to show you a way how to do this with really minimal coding. And the other function that also does recursive operations that is um, 
quite useful if the result that you want to create is a Scala value is the list accumulate function, but that's not um, the topic for, to, for today. We'll not cover that today in today's demo. And um, functions can be manually written in Power Query, but if you do that, that's actually coding and not what we want to do today. There are, they can become some to troubleshoot, and therefore there is an alternative um, way in Power Query um, that uses an automatic function generator. And um, to do that, to to do this, you have to generate parameters and use them within your query, like I'm gonna show you later. And that way, no real coding is actually required. And just a um, quick um, portrait of list generate with my words. List generate generates a list by adding one item at a time. You can basically start with zero and create a list by adding one item at a time. And while doing so, you have or the function has access to the previous item, which actually is the last item of the list so far. And that is the recursive aspect of this function. And then there are some aspects to it. The question might arise um, which logic will actually be used <laughs> for each item that will be generated and um, how long will this generation last? So when will this um, iterator stop um, iterating or generating this list? And um, Point A and B are actually uh, two of the items that are covered by the function parameters of this generate. And the general syntax here is that we have um, the first argument is a function with no parameter, is basically um, a starting value. Um, if we say that while we are generating one item at a time and having access to the last or previous item. When you start doing so, you need some, something like an, initial, like an initial value. And that is the first um, function argument that, that goes into the list, list generate function. And the second function that goes into list generate is actually the condition. Um, if the iteration shall continue or if we have reached our goal and the um, list desired list is ready. And the last uh, function argument is actually the logic which is applied by creating the specific item for the list. And this is also a function that has just one parameter, namely the previously iterated item. And this is just a quick um, pres um, yeah, presentation about what the function is intended to do and that we have to create three functions to make it work. And the sample I want to work with you on for today is um, a text extraction task here. You see that I have a string of uh, mixed numbers and letters. And my task is to extract the first two subsequent letter um, capital letters. So I need to have two capital letters that follow each other. And then I also want to have the first four um, subsequent numbers um, that follow the first two subsequent capital letters. And um, the way I'm gonna designing, I'm gonna design this solution is to make it 
basically generic so that um, the conditions that we have here, first two capital letters and a second function is for, um, for numbers, that these conditions can be varied, added or, or um, adjusted fairly easily. So this is the topic for today that we're going to try to accomplish with um, a recursive approach. And let me therefore grab, show the first, first sample. So what we, what we're going to, how we're going to accomplish this is by creating a table uh, with list generate that looks like this where we have where we will see the string one letter at a time in each row here so this here we have uh, in row six and seven we have the first two capital letters and in row 12 to 15 we have the first four um, numbers and then the iteration will stop and in order to come up with this we have to create some helper fields that uh, help us coming up um, with this identification here and the point is that we for each um, row we're going to determine if the value that the current value we have is actually valid according to the conditions we have to iterate through. So here we see that for P and H we have a true in here and also for the numbers we have true in here. And to actually I sh let me just um, adjust the the string a bit to make the sample more um, self-explaining. So here we have, um, so here we see whether the current value is true and we see that for the P and the H in here, um, but after this first condition has been validated, the logic lo looks then looks for numbers. And here we see that um, um, the first number that will be reached um, will also have a true flag in here, but because it is not followed by another number, the flag then goes over to false and we don't, we cannot use um, the, the, the number one on position number 10. And to um, actually reflect that logic, we have to determine a logic that um, can check whether we've actually reached the end of the of of the um, of the condition or uh, which is actually reflected in the length of the subsequent items that we have to search so um, in this next column here um, the length of the current condition will, de will be displayed. So for the first condition, we have to find two subsequent items. And for the second condition, we have to find four subsequent items. And um, so we have to um, add another counter that um, adds um, that counts up for every valid um, match it has found. So for the first logic where we have uh, have to find two characters, um, it counts one and two. And then when it reached two, um, a condition that checks whether the condition is finished, then we'll switch to true. And here for the second condition, our counter um, for the number 
one in row 10, it will count one up. But uh, because of in the next row, the, um, the character doesn't match the condition, the counter goes back to zero. So um, we have the counter that adds, um, that counts up as long as um, we have a, um, a sequential matches here without any interruptions. And I'm also counting the conditions um, so that I now when I have to stop, I know that I have two conditions in here. So my final stop command at the end will be when my condition counter uh, actually has reached the maximum number of conditions um, of my values to find. And the conditions that I'm using are actually part of the list in here. And you see these are two conditions in here. And if I actually want to add more conditions, I would just um, I can just create more conditions like I'm going to show you in a minute down here, add them to the list. And I actually have to do, I, I wouldn't have to adjust any logic um, in my formulas because um, the condition that checks whether the iteration has to continue or not just um, checks. Um, um, the length of my list of conditions. So this is fully dynamic at the end. Um, but um, what I'm going to do with you now is to start to build the solution from scratch. So I'm going to remove the finished solution here and start to build out the logic. And let's see how far we get. Um, I've split it into, um, into parts, basically. Maybe we only finish the first part, which will allow you um, basically to extract a string of, uh, yeah, of a desired condition from, uh, from, from, uh, from the first string. So, let me just um, give this a nice name. This is my string. And what I'm going to start is to create um, the initial condition. So basically the first row of our, um, of our function. And therefore I'm going to reference the string that we're going to check. So I'm right click the query and go to reference here. And I'm going to call this initial. And what I going to, what I want to do is to check the first character here. So, um, in the text tools command, I go to extract, go to first characters and say that I only want to have the first character in here. And to make my life easier, because we want to do it the no code way in here, I'm going to convert this to a table first. So, so this is my, um, I can call this maybe character. And what um, I also am going to create is, um, is, a, is a counter. So I'm going to create a column that is called counter. And I'm starting with zero. And the first condition that I want to check is whether the first um, character is actually a capital letter. And to do that, I first create a column with capital letters. So um, capital letters. And therefore I create a list and this is really some of the few coding bits uh, that we we are going to use in here. Um, I can create a list by using curly brackets. And in there, I type in the first capital letter that I want to search for, which is uh, large A. 
And then the second capital letter is a Z. And I'm going to close it with curly brackets again. And this now has given me a list of all capital letters. And now I want to check if my character is actually included in this list of capital letters. And therefore I create a conditional column and I call it is valid. And I check, I want to check if the col uh, column character is included in the capital letters. And, um, or the other way around, I want to check if the list of capital letters includes the character in here. And if I check the column capital letters, um, and search for an operator that lets me do that. I see that there is no operator in there to um, check whether a list column actually includes um, a character. But I'm using the conditional. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to define the condition here as close as possible and tweak the rest of the code later. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use um, the character column and um, here I can use contains and then again I'm going to check against a, um, a column and I'm going to check against the character column again because Later on, I will just replace the column name capital letters, uh, the column name, the first column name by capital letters, but I can use the operator here more or less. So if what I want to do is um, check is or return, if my capital letters um, have a match, then I want to return true. And if not, I want to return false. So I'm going to uh, write that out here like so and click on OK. And then I'm going to tweak the code a bit. So what I actually want to check is not if a text contains something, but um, that the, a list contains something. And I'm going to check if the list that sits in the column capital letters actually contains the character value here. And now you see that the value has switched to false because number four is not included in the capital letters in here. And um, so this is um, basically my first raw, raw um, step as my initial check whether the first character is valid or not. And I also have a counter in here. Um, so in order to make use of the, um, or in order to be able to create functions in Power Query automatically, we have to feed the parameter, uh, the function arguments as, as po proper parameters, but uh, this is a query. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a parameter here, manage parameters, new parameter, and I'm going to call this parameter previous. And I untick required, uh, leave text as any, and click on OK. And then I'm going to assign the query initial to this parameter value. And therefore, I go to the advanced editor and replace the null by the reference to the initial query in here. So now I have, um, oh, that's bullshit, uh, um, sorry, that's pretty um, stupid what I did. Um, sorry about <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, what I have to feed. So, um, and the next thing I'm going to do is to build out my main query. 
and for this um, I'm also referencing the string but this time I'm going to check the second I'm I'm starting with um, checking the second element of it so I'm going to reference this guy and now I want to um, extract the second element of it and therefore I choose range I have to skip the first character and I just want um, one character from it so that's this but now I have a hard-coded uh, range in here and if I imagine that um, I want to iterate uh, through my string in here I have to make up my mind on how to Ooh. make sorry okay um, I have to make up my mind uh, on how to make this guy here um, dynamic. And therefore, I go back one step um, here. And I'm going to... Did I transform? Yeah. So actually, I like I did before, I actually should... Um, convert my string to a table and then I hope I did that no. okay I'm gonna that doesn't matter so I'm gonna I have converted my string to a table and what I do is um, to get the dynamic um, skip range here I first add my previous result to my table. So in here, I create a custom column where I reference um, this parameter in here, which is called previous, like so. Click on OK, and I'm going to expand the columns that I need. And these are, um, yeah, let's just Let's just show uh, all columns with the exception of the capital letters here. And actually, I want to have um, a prefix for them. So I go back to the gear wheel and say I want to have um, pref as the prefix for the columns that actually come from, the, from my previous iteration in here. So, what I can do now is to create the current counter. So, I can first check my columns and transform data types in here. And I am check the previous counter and say, let me add a column where I simply add one to it add one and this column shouldn't um, be called addition this is actually my current counter and this current counter is actually um, the range that I have to skip in order to get the the current character of my string so in here I'm going to add another column where I say I'm going to check this column, uh, my string column, and say I want to have the range in here. The starting index has to be hard-coded, unfortunately. I cannot reference a column in here. So I give it a dummy value of 1, and the number of characters of 1 will always be correct. Click on OK. And then I click on the gear wheel. Um, no, I go to the formula bar in here and replace the hard coded one by a reference to my counter, like so. And now I can be sure that, why is that text middle? Okay, so now I can be sure 
that um, I always get the correct um, character moving, um, iterating through my my string, basically. So this is my current character. And in the next step, I'm gonna check if the character is valid. And this is basically the same logic than I've done in the initial query. So I can go back to my initial query and just grab the code bits that I've used in there. Are there any questions so far? Just one question now popped up in chat from uh, Faraz uh, Shaikh. Uh, he's asking instead of adding, uh, can we use uh, index column? Or can, um, you, can you go unmute and explain if needed? Mm. So you want to replace the counter by, by the index column? Hi, MK. Hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, MK, instead of uh, in the counter column, can we use the index instead of uh, doing the addition? If, if you would add an index um, to this table, you would only get one because there are is always just one row in here. So I think um, that wouldn't that wouldn't work because we are always only working with one row in here. Okay. You no. Know? So in this case, no, it wouldn't work. So in here, I want to create um, the um, column with the capital letters. So I'm going to add a column that I call capital letters and I'm just pasting the code in here, my A to Z capital letters code. And uh, the, in the next column, I was um, intending to check um, if the list contains um, the value from the char character column. So I'm going to copy uh, the code in here as well. And I'm gonna create the is valid column in my main um, query as again. So I'm gonna just pasting it in here. And again, the character seven is not um, valid because it's not included in our list of capital letters. And then what um, I also need is for the case that um, valid values um, are starting to come in. I need to count um, how many vali valid values we already have in a row. And to make, um, uh, to, to make um, it a bit easier for us uh, to, to code this, I'm gonna duplicate the string that we have so far. And I'm gonna use I'm <laughs> and I'm gonna use a string instead that has two capital letters um, as the first letters in here. So that makes it easier for us to um, determine um, the logic that we have to apply. And let me just um, this is my main here. So let me just check. Okay, so it had, um, it looks as if we have some type conversions in here. So let, let's just step through this, quickly step through the steps again <coughs> of the main query. So now we are starting with a string that has two capital letters. Um, I'm ex dragging in the previous results. And here uh, had, uh, we have, a, um, have an automatic type conversion that I wasn't uh, very careful about. So this um, actually has to be type text. So now we remove the error here. And so far the logic looks okay. So what we have to determine now um, is actually um, the another counter. Um, um, the first counter we used, 
this should allow us to step through uh, through this uh, whole string. So um, actually what would have been a bit more appropriate is to call this counter overall counter. So that is a bit more meaningful name. And I'm gonna change the name here as well and call this guy overall counter. And actually I also have to adjust um, the expansion it, here. MK, yeah. you've got overall counter counter as a naming of the column. You've doubled the counter in the naming of the column. Really? Oh yeah. How did I do that? Thanks. So here we have now um, our overall counter that allows us to step through the through the uh, whole string. And in order to um, count how many valid values we already have in a row, we actually have to go back to our initial string and add this counter here as well. So we're gonna add another custom column that, um, um, and we call this valid counter. And here we start, <coughs> We say if is valid is equal to true. We start with one because we have to count one up already. Else our counter starts with zero. And then would also be helpful. So here we say if is valid is true already. So if we have our first match in the first initial step already, we have um, a one in here already, so we found our first valid string. Otherwise, we're going to start with zero. And back in the main transformation, um, I messed up. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up my my characters in here. Um, I have to adjust to overall counter column name in here and hopefully things will be fine. So no further errors. Now, again, we can again grab the logic from the initial or just at least the basic part of it and create the valid, valid string counter in our main transformation as well. So I'm gonna add a column, call it valid string counter and paste the initial initial logic in here. So if the current is valid column is true, what am I going to do? I don't want to return one, of course, but I want to increase the previous, um, previous valid string counter by one. And I see that I haven't expanded it yet. Here you see in the list of available columns that it's not there yet. So I'm going to close this temporarily with the um, code I have copied and go back to the expanded custom, click on the gear wheel and um, also select the valid string counter in here. And then I go back to my logic in here and click on the gear wheel. Yeah, and then I have, <laughs> I have to replace the one by the reference to the previous yes valid string counter like so, um, and add one to it. And if the current value is not valid, then it goes back to zero. So that's uh, the secret source in here, that this would go back to zero if the second value would not be valid. So let's just try it out. I go back to my string and replace it by a um, small b. And then in my main transformation, 
I see that the valid string counter fell back to zero, actually. So um, this is the logic that checks basically um, if the current value is, is valid or not and adjusts the counters accordingly. And the last thing we have to do is whether this um, at this stage we are actually finished. So let's go back to modify the sample. So um, with this string, we would have been finished um, by the second iteration or by the first iteration of the main transformation function. So our valid string counter is two, and this is actually the number of characters we wanted to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another column that is called is finished. And in there, I just check if my valid string counter is equal to two and it returns true. And now I can actually um, work out the last. Um, oh, let's uh, do another thing first. Actually, let's start um, transforming our queries into functions. So because we have used uh, and referenced the, um, should have used the, um, the parameter previous in here, if we right click um, on the query, we can go down to create function in here and it will uh, allow us to choose a name for the function and it also shows us that this function has one parameter, namely the previous parameter that we've used. I'm going to call this my transformations. And now you see that another folder has automatically be created in here. It contains the newly automatically um, generated function in here. It also creates our old main transformation query that has just been moved into this folder. And it also contains the parameter that has been used in in the query in here. And we can do the same with the initial because we know that for list generate, we have to feed in the functions and not the queries. So I go on my initial, do the same, right click um, the query and go to create functions. And there it asks me, if I really want to do that, because the initial query actually does not reference any parameters, but that is actually the strange thing about the, the syntax. You have to uh, provide a function without any parameter to it. So this is actually just the right thing to do. So I just click create. And I'm going to call this fn initial like so. And you see another folder has been generated, this time only the function and the query because there is no parameter involved. And the third function the, we have to create for the list generate function is the condition that uh, under which the iterations shall happen. And the argument or the logic for the condition is in our last column in here. So the condition shall check the every um, item if the field is finished is actually true. Um, and if it is false, it shall continue. And if it is true, it shall stop. And the way this has uh, will be written um, 
um, I'm going to show you in a second. So to do that, we have to reference the previous parameter because the condition has to check uh, what's going on in, in this previous um, set. Um, so again, I'm going to reference this parameter and I'm going to drill down on the on the column um, on the column is finished and where am I here um, this shall be my con uh, my condition so this shall become my condition but um, if I scroll to the right here I see that this field is missing why because this parameter actually references the initial query and not the main transformation query. So in order to um, make this work, I go back to the initial query, add a column in here and called is finished. And we know that for the initial query, this can also only be false. So I just type in false. Um, and now if I go back to my condition, I see the is finished column in here uh, with the false value in it. I actually want to get the false value. Therefore, I hover my mouse over the cell, right click my mouse and um, check drill down. And then um, the code will uh, just uh, um, return the false value. And what I want to check, I create a new step, is if is finished, is actually false. If it is false, the iteration shall continue and that only if it's true, it shall stop. So you have to write it that um, the basically the true condition is gives the go for the next iteration. So is finished is false. This condition is true. So therefore, at least the second iteration of our sample here will take place. And this has also been transformed into a function, but that's again quite easy. I right click my mouse click on create function and just have to give it a name fn addition like so and then um, it has created a subfolder that's not so nice i will just uh, create it uh, drag it into into the my main hierarchy um, like so and now I see that I have three folders with three nice functions in it. And now comes the big um, list generate exercise. Therefore, I'm going to create a new blank query and start typing list generate, list generate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I should have known better. Um, list generate functions in initial as function condition as function and next as function our initial function is fn initial condition is fn condition and the transformation is fn uh, it's called my transformations it's not so Summation. So these three functions will be fed into the list generate function and this should be it. Here we see that the list returns um, a table. Um, but in order to expand it, I'm gonna create uh, first convey convert the list itself into a table and then I'm gonna expand all the fields in there. And then I see that <laughs> something hasn't worked out as expected because I only see one row in here. 
actually uh, I don't know <laughs> what I did wrong. Uh, let, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Oh yeah. Um, I think the condition has. Um, I just have one row, and I think that the condition has kicked in too soon. Um, that's a typical typical uh, problem with list um, generate. And as a general tip uh, to troubleshoot errors in this generate, I can recommend to um, start with a different um, with a, a different um, condition function. So I'm going to duplicate this guy um, uh, to uh, use it back later. But now I'm going to change the condition column. And instead of referencing the is finished column, I will actually reference the overall counter instead. So I'm going to check that column, drill down and say, let I want to see the first 10 iterations, for example. So I say overall counter is less or equal to 10. And then I can check what my list generate is actually doing for the first um, 10 or 11 um, rounds in here. And here I see that actually this generate um, for the second row that we actually wanted to see. We see that um, the condition true is in here. And because this condition true is in the current row, um, the, con the iteration actually stops in the current row. So in order to uh, solve this, we should actually check if the is finished column of the previous row has true and not the is finished column of the current row. And therefore, we have to um, basically um, go back to the main transformation and also expand the is finished column in here like so and also in the initial step we have to have a previous is finished column because the condition has to check the first row as well. So we basically have to create a dummy column in here that is called the same has the same name than and then in our main query, which was pref is finished. And this is false because it shall also continue. So now we have um, in both of our queries the previous is finished column and we can go back to our um, original condition and say instead of checking the current is finished column we are going to check the previous is finished column. I'm going to right click my mouse, drill down and then add the check if the previous is finished is equal to false, like so. And then I go back to my execution and I see that we have um, our two characters in here um, because uh, like we've intended and the current is finished is true, but the previous is finished has um yeah um has been yeah <laughs> sorry um <laughs> the condition <laughs> did his job and checked uh, the correct way so this is really a bit um this is just annoying in my eyes 
that we basically often have to go back one row and add additional columns uh, to come up with a halfway sensible um, syntax for this. Um, but that's um, basically the logic about it. So that's the first part of the exercise uh, that we have basically um, shown how to use a recursive approach where we in our main transformations have to reference values from the previous row in order to uh, determine the logic that has been necessary um, to um, basically identify um, a subsequent series of capital letters or whatever you want to check. Are there any questions for it? Imke, I have yeah. a question. Yeah. Uh, what you show, uh, if I understand correctly, is not recursive. It's using the list generate function. That means uh, for cycle. Am I correct or not? Uh, that means what? Sorry, I didn't get uh, that. Sorry, uh, uh, slowly. Uh, that if means... I understand correctly, you run a, a for cycle equivalent in M language, not a recursive function. Mm, that c could be true. Um, actually, I'm not a developer. Uh, I'm not a developer. I might not be aware. Um, the difference between uh, the recursive um, function at the end the four cycle but um, yeah but the point is that um, the um, uh, or the speciality or the crucial point here is that um, this function allows you to um, reference a previously calculated value and that for my, at least for my understanding, um, is of yeah, basically a recursive nature um, because yes. you cannot, it's not a simple iterator if you mean that. It's not a simple four cycle because um, um, the previous values here, they don't come from the original list that we are iterating through. We are simply iterating through a list of characters, but the values from the previous um, uh, row, basically, or from the previous character we need, we don't have in the original string. Um, so, um, in here, like you see, we have the previous character. If we only would need that guy, that would be a simple um, a simple loop basically, um, but we have um, we have to um, access some logic in here that has just been created in the within the within the list generate function. So that is basically the main differentiator between a sim simple iterator. Um, like list transform or um, a table at column um, and the list and the function we are seeing here. You can do you can do the same stuff um, with list generate like with the native recursive um, operator in M which is the at sign. Yeah, well, definitely no doubt what you've shown is very nice. I really appreciate it. Uh, but the, there is a big distinction distinguish between the recursive function, which are, as you mentioned, is uh, at signed, and which are really uh, memory killers, uh, especially for M language. They are really slow and uh, really eating up uh, your operation uh, and uh, efficiency of your CPU. Uh, what you've shown is definitely very nice. But I would not call it a recursive function because it's uh, well, definitely it's very that you could uh, create the functions kind of off fly on fly based on uh, transformation steps you created in a query. That's definitely very good. We can basically we can 
<laughs> if you want to do, we can follow that it up later. Um, you can do the you can do recursive things uh, uh, with it definitely. Uh, maybe um, you would uh, design it a bit different. You can um, you can do any recursive operation with list generate like you would uh, you can do with a native add sign. Um, please feel free um, to send me a task that you think is recursive and would not be covered with this um, approach. I'm showing you and I'm happy <laughs> to present this um, in the next user group meeting where I'm presenting this. This is definitely um, fully recursive. Um, that th this has the full recursive potential and <laughs> I'm very sorry if I um, have not been able to demonstrate um, uh, this functionality in today's um, sample, but uh, it can definitely do recursive stuff. Okay, and no no issues on mm -hmm. your side. Probably I'm a little slower to today or to today evening, so mm -hmm. I will uh, turn up your code and uh, check it. Um, and definitely I will keep you informed and in touch. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, so um, are there any other questions? Imke, hi, this is Kirill. Um, Hello. Is, can you go back um, to the slide where you had the use cases for the recursive? I was trying to take some notes, but I, I missed that. Yeah. Thank you. Oops. Where did it, where did it disappear? So here we go. Uh, yeah. Where well, are we? Here. Yeah, that, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So. Most of the so at least for the uh, for the middle three ones you find samples on my blog post um, of all for all um, for all um, applications here you find list generate um, approaches on my blog post as well just search a bit for for some of the key key um, um, key um, points here and you all find um, samples on on my blog post for yeah, these well, functions. I, I have a lot of like parent child hierarchies use cases mm. for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And Imke. Yeah. Uh, sorry. For running totals, you were saying that uh, uh, is it at least uh, accumulate you would use? No. 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 Uh, um, is there a blog on your on your mm -hmm. website or some, something, just mm -hmm. running totals always interesting in Power Query. Mm -hmm. Because most of them are terribly slow and there's just there are very few. Um, uh, the, um, you have a really, um, so for running totals, uh, there are some, some aspects that come together here. Um, so, in order to make running totals uh, fast, you really have to make sure uh, that you only iterate through the table once. And most um, most other approaches you see, um, they um, are doing um, calculations for every row of the table, which makes it uh, terribly slow. And therefore, you can use this memory. It's called memory efficient clustered running total in Power BI, and there you find um, a function that you can just here, if you click on view raw, you just can copy the function code like so, just um, check it, copy it, and if you then go over to Power Query, uh, like here for example, um, with the copied code in the clipboard, and mm. click on blank query, go to the advanced editor, and then paste the code. Um, then you will have a full um, function in here with all the with all the input parameters that you can use. Um, so this is really, really um, the fastest um, calculation um, for a running total that's currently on the market, I would say. Uh, so basically, you are in this case more to solve running totals via M code rather than um, 
DAX in, in this case because because of this operating efficiency. That's what that's what mm. you're saying. Mm. Yeah, it, it it really depends. I mean, usually, I would create my running totals in DAX in measures because mm -hmm. um, that's that's um, basically what I would normally do. Um, but um, actually, the reason why I did it uh, did this guy was that I had a special um, requirement um, um, in DAX where I um, where I um, had out of memory errors in DAX. So mm -hmm. that you can read that in my in my mm -hmm. um, article. So it was such a large table, and um, you see with with uh, with earlier here. So I had to basically create a clustered running total in there, and I just got an out of memory error. So um, I had to find a way, and therefore I then used the Power Query alternative, which didn't have the problem. Yeah. But for some, I mean, there might be sometimes it's it's there might be cases where running totals are fine in 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 Power Query as well when you have stock um, um, stock values or something like that or um, where um, yeah DAX DAX might become or your DAX is slow already and you don't want to add another running total in there. Then, for some cases, yeah, running totals in Power Query might actually be a good alternative. The only thing, just please confirm or um, uh, say otherwise. The only thing is, like, when you calculate something in DAX, there is no comeback to Power Query. Just to yes, yes, okay. that's the truth. Okay. Yeah. No, that's yeah, yeah, because. I mean, columns. Uh, that this is my rule of thumb. Columns should always be co um, calculated in in Power Query because once you do it in DAX and recognize that you um, that that you need yeah recursive calculations or stuff like that uh, that you cannot do in DAX, then you are stuck. So, um, as a, as a rule of thumb, I would say columns. Do, do the columns in, query, in Power Query and only use DAX for measures. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think we have 13 minutes left and I think that's a bit too much for, for the second part um, of the demonstration. I think I will, um, if, if this uh, recording will be published, I will just um, put a follow-up recording with the second part of the task at hand. Um, or how is how is the general? <laughs> Shall I uh, try to rush it through the uh, last twelve minutes, or what do you guys think? Um, raise raise your hand or give a give some feedback if you want to see it now, or um, shall I show that later? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. So I think it's it's I th looks like it is enough for today. Yep, most people are voting for later. I say let's let's do a follow up on this and uh, see the next part. But uh, this part was also for if somebody is not uh, really skillful in uh, Power Query, it's, it could be uh, some time to digest. Okay, great, good. Yeah. So then, if there are no further questions, then. I hope you enjoyed um, the presentation and got some useful ideas out of it. Thanks a lot for your attendance. Thank you, Imke, uh, for joining and for sharing such an interesting session. And I, if, if there are additional questions, if somebody has a question, uh, you can you can still do it. If not, we'll wrap it up quickly. So just just as a reminder, recording will be available. So in the next few days, on a Germany Power Platform user group, and you can uh, follow all the news and updates and all the upcoming presentation on uh, our Power Platform user group on Meetup. So yeah, if if there are no questions, so I will say I wish everybody a good evening or a good rest of the day 
And thanks again, Inke, for joining and sharing this nice solution. Thanks all. Thanks, Augustine, for having me. Have a nice evening, all. Bye.